Hi, welcome to Hammer Down Woodworking. I'm Tracy Maxfield and today we're going to do a little bit of wood turning. I've got this blank glued up. It's made out of maple. It's one and a half by one and a half and we're going to cut 45s, cut the corners off of it to make it more round and then we'll go to the lathe. We're going to be trying to make some door pulls for some drawers that are in a box that I'm building. All right, the first thing we're going to do, our blade is at 90. We are going to set the blade with this digital angle finder at 45. All right, now that everything is set, we're going to just send this blank through, chopping off just a little bit of the corner to save some on having to turn those off before we get down actually to the meat of things, so we'll cut those off. Now we have somewhat more of a cylinder type blank with the corners cut off of it. I'll have to go through and remark center on it now that it's been cut down, but uh, this was marked actually before I cut it down to an inch and a half by inch and a half. Uh, but I'll remark center on it and then we can take it over to the lathe. Okay, now that I've got a new center marked on each end of our blank, it's time to take our cleat, our center out of that, and then we'll drive that point into the center on the end of the blank, drive it down far enough that these cleats right here will bite the blank and keep it turning. And you always want to drive that in with a rubber mallet or some other type of sturdy but hard surface, hard enough to drive it. If you drive that with a hammer, regular claw hammer, or a ball pin hammer, shop hammer, whatever, you will start mushrooming the top of that and it will no longer work in your lathe. So you want something that will just drive it down into the wood to make it stick, but not something that is going to be harder than this steel to where it mushrooms that over. And now what we're going to do is just insert that pressure will hold that once I bring the tail stock up. Got her blank in there, got her tool rest set, got her roughing gouge, and probably will hit high speed on this once it's, once I start. I'll put you on some music so you'll have something to listen to. And we'll get to turning. And I'm going to be turning roughly around probably about 2,000 RPMs give or take. I do not have a digital readout on, on this lathe and you'll probably see me speed it up and slow it down several times until I get it at the right speed that I need for turning this into just a round tube at first. Here's where we're at so far. You can see right here we're 
this was square and then cut the corners off square corner well I've got this down to almost where I need to be at I still got just a little bit of flat right here if you notice just a little bit of flat right here and the rest of it is pretty well round we'll get down to where we get this out of it and we get this out of it and then we'll have our cylinder and then we can make our drawer pulls out of the end I mean there will be several drawer pulls in this one piece we only need two of them we're going to get two two drawer pulls out of them probably going to take roughly around I don't know three inches or so and then by the time we cut them down and shape them and everything they'll they'll be about an inch inch and a half long or so roughly perfectly round cylinder from here down. Now we've got to make sure that it's the same size. Okay, right now on this end we're at one and five sixteenths and as I go up it's bigger. The caliper will not go over up here. So what I've done is, is I took a pen, just took a pencil and made me a mark as to where my size change changes is at. And it's consistently big all the way up through. So now what I'll start doing is start cutting off at that mark and checking it as I go to see if I'm getting anywhere close to the right size. exactly perfect but you want it close Here is just a piece of strip hardboard with a strip of I think that's 80 grit sandpaper on it that'll hold it rigid enough and I'll sand on that till I get that way that I want it. When we do our finishing on it, finish sanding, we'll use a lot smaller grit, something up to like 220. sand or anything it's going to make it smaller so now we're going to get a new measurement 
and see if we're consistent. Looks pretty good. Still just a little bit tight right on the end there, but that's fine. That'll be cut off anyway. This right here looks pretty good. So that's got me pretty well consistent in size. And that will shine like new money when you take 220 to it. And that's maple too. That is that is a pretty hard wood, so What I'm trying to do here <clears throat> is this end right here is going to be cut off flat. This will be the drawer, drawer pull. I'm making a cylinder here now that later will cut this off. This will be just a cylinder with it kind of tapered up like a bowl. That will be cut off. A screw will go on the inside of the drawer into the end of that. And that right there will be the drawer pull. We just have to cut this off out here and shape this and then we'll have to do another one. Got to the point to where we're almost ready to cut this one off. That's our drawer pull. And we're going to hit this while we still got, before we release it from the lathe, we're going to hit it with some 220 sandpaper and smooth it up real good. Then all we got to do is cut it there and cut it there, and we've got a drawer pull. <music>
that we've got it this far, before I cut this out, I want to get the profile of it. That way I can use this as a template to get the profile of the second one because I've got to have two of them. And all you have to do with this is just put, put it on your piece and smash it down into it. And right there is the profile of this drawer pull. All right, now I'm going to show you how I'm going to cut this off. This right here is just something that I made. This is a 1 8 inch bandsaw blade. I made a dowel and drilled a hole in it in both ends and I epoxied that blade down in that and I'll show you how I use that. Now that's got that. Let's see if I can get you a shot of it. You can see there's just barely a little bit left holding those on. Now I'll take them out and take a pull saw and finish cutting that off. And then we can make our other one out of that, the rest of that stock. Right, now I've got this piece in the beach vise. And this is just a full saw. There's not very much left to cut. But right there, I, I'll sand this a little bit, but right there is your drawer pull. It's your knob to go on the front of your drawer. And that's how they're made. i got to sand this down just a little bit, finish this up. And all that's left is some sanding. And to drill a hole. That's it. And that gives us our door pull for one of our drawers and we'll take this uh, turning blank, cut this off flat, recenter, put that back in the lathe and we will turn us a mate to this one out of the next section of it. But we'll not do that on camera. Um, the project that I'm working on, I'm also working on a video for it also. It's been a slow process, but as soon as I get it done, I'll have that video up and going. And you, if you watch my videos, you will see these door pulls again. It's Hammerdown Woodworking. Thanks for watching.